Hey guys, welcome to Mojo Talks. I am Rebecca and this is Binge Worthy, the series where we talk about some binge worthy things that you probably should have watched this weekend as per our list that came out on Friday of the top three series to binge this weekend. With me are some of our resident bingers, Miriam, the head of Junior Mojo, and Jim, whose job is... I am the community and platforms coordinator. Yes, I should have that in my notes, but I do not. Thank you for introducing yourself to the fine people. All right, so we have, let's start with Arrested Development, season mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. It was pretty good. It seems like, um, I don't know if people who are watching watch season four, but it seemed like they tried to learn from their mistakes on the last season. You well, they even had re-edited yeah. what they had done originally mm -hmm. because it was so... Yeah. You know. One yeah. of the big complaints of season four was that you didn't actually have the Bluth family together in very much of the show. And they're such good foils for each other and they work off of each other. So in this season, it seems like all those extra people who formed plot lines around main characters are kind of gone or really like set to the side or just disappeared. And um, it seems like they really tried to have scenes with people together. And you can tell that they made an effort. You don't really have many scenes with the whole family together, but they really tried to keep more of the Bluth family together this season. And I think that that helped. Is there any Liza? Okay, actually that's a big, if you watch, the, I don't want to give any spoilers I guess for season four, All but right. I mean it's it's been out for a long time. Yeah. But at the end of season four, we're not sure what happened to Lucille too. So this is kind of part of the mystery this season. So I can't mm. tell you what okay. you see her or not, but it's part of the mystery that they pick up from that season. Grab that brown area by its points, no matter what your mother says. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so she's kind of, she's definitely talked about. And then there's a lot of re like kind of fallout from George Michael and Michael dating Rebel Alley and so figuring that out in the very last scene of the first of the last season. So um, a lot of fallout. So they definitely pick up where they left off. Okay. So would you say that the spark is still there? Yeah, I mean, as, as I was watching, I think it's better than season four, although I am one of the few people who actually enjoyed the unedited season four. Mm. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was fun. Did you watch the edited one? I did watch the edited one. Okay. And I still, I mean, it was... I, I was kind of like even on them. I liked the experimentation that they did with the first one. So I was kind of like, I didn't think it was super necessary to re-edit it. But um, what I thought was I think that these, like I felt like I was watching it and I just didn't feel the same kind of energy that I used to watch with the rest of development. And I don't know, I'd be interested to hear what people at home think about it because um, it, I, I'd be curious because I just didn't feel the same kind of spark anymore. Do you think that could have anything to do with kind of the behind the scenes drama that's been going on? You know, there was recently a New York Times article and a bit of a soundbite uh, recording of a kind of contentious interview that they had mm -hmm. as a cast or like the majority of the cast where they were talking about the issues with Jeff Jeffrey Tambor being kind of a jerk on set and Jessica Walter was crying and, and all the men kind of came to Jeffrey Tambor's uh, aid in the yeah. argument. So do you think that kind of tension could play into it? It's an interesting anecdote to talk about in terms of the spark and that kind of thing. I don't know because I, I don't know when that happened in the season. I read somewhere that it definitely happened during season five. So it would be interesting to see if that kind of lent itself to the chemistry with the cast. But um, it's super unfortunate, and also Jeffrey Tambor has been kind of uh, one of the people identified in the Me Too movement. So you know, it's it's it's. I don't know if that's influencing how I watch it. I, but um, it's all pretty unfortunate. Ah, <sighs> feeling something. It's just nice to have some control over one's life. But your mother is a wonderful person. If you are a really big fan of the show, I there's still a lot about it that's really fun. The you know the cast still does its usual thing. It's funny. It's cute, but. Um, I don't know if it's time, I mean it makes me really sad to say because I'm such a huge fan of the show, but I don't know if it's time to maybe let this one be over, mm. maybe. Interesting. Well speaking of Me Too, I feel like, I, I don't know how this segue happened, but uh, <laughs> oh, it's now. Jim, you watched Gretzko, which is a Netflix original anime series from the makers of Hello Kitty? Yes, yes. Which has good. shades of Me Too as well, it sounds like, All right, or in, so, in a certain way. In some sense, I guess. So, Agretsuko is about this 25-year-old red panda woman who, you know, goes, who works at an office job as an accountant, and she goes through a lot of horrible, really frustrating everyday occurrences that are very common for women in workplace. Like, her boss is uh, literally a sexist pig. I'm gonna need some hot tea. That's part of your job. 
because it's women's work. Yeah. Like an actual pig who's also sexist. <laughs> um, and so like, you know, yeah, and then he demands her to do all kinds of like tasks that are not necessarily in her job description, such as, you know, cleaning his desk, uh, preparing the humidifier, and most uh, commonly, just bringing him tea. And basically, um, it's very interesting how Retsuko deals with this because the show takes place in Japan and Tokyo, and where like the uh, there are some social pressures to be very polite, very accepting of what comes your way, right? And the way Retsuko deals with this is um, at nights she goes to this karaoke bar all by herself and sings very brutal death metal, <laughs> just like screams, and that's basically like. Every episode has kind of like this build up to the climax where she gets completely fed up with everything and has the scene where she just kind of like bursts out singing, screaming. Her appearance changes. She's like normally has like this very cutesy face, but when she's singing his, her death metal, it becomes like kind of like she gets like those like heavy metal uh, makeup, kind of like kiss. Yeah. And she's like a, the kanji for rage appears on her forehead. Her eyes glow and she's just like this very, very rough voice. And it's very interesting in that sense. And, you know, you get to see a lot about how, um, well, not a lot about it. You get to see her deal with this issue that is kind of relatable, I found. Because, yeah, like, it's very realistic, even though everybody's an animal and everybody's kind of like a caricaturized version of some of, like, the workplace tropes, as it were. Like, one of her uh, colleagues is, like, a gazelle, her name is Tsunoda, and she basically is kind of like very perky, she's always like sucking up to the boss, and like, you know, most of the other women at the office kind of hate her because of how fake she is, mm. but then it turns out that she's very much aware of what kind of a personality that she's putting out there, and she knows that acting like this will get her ahead, so she's kind of basically using this. So I thought that was one of the most, more um, interesting parts of the show, kind of like, in the way it portrays things kind of realistically, even though everyone is an animal. Yeah. Do you think, what do you think of the timing of this show? Kind of in the current, like, like we talked about Me Too and whatever that other hashtag is. Time's up. Time's up. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's kind of interesting because, um, you know, yeah, it's like a very realistic in its portrayal of uh, what some people on the internet are calling like an um, accurate representation of pent-up feminine rage. <laughs> and I think it's good that we have it these days so that, you know, it's like a way you can see, you know, kind of like portray that on, 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 the, on the screen. The only issue some people have with it is that it doesn't necessarily have like a... Solution? Like a, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't resolve any of yeah. her problems. Because like it? in my head right now, I'm just like, why doesn't she just tell her boss off? <laughs> or quit? Or I mean, something. That's funny, like at some points, like she does have these moments all in her head. At the end though, she kind of like calms herself down. She counts to 10 and promises that she'll be a you know, good, uh, sociable member of society. So I don't know. I don't know if that has to do with the fact that this is like kind of like a Japanese show mm -hmm. coming from like a different understanding of like, you know, politeness and yeah. like social norms. If it was made by a Western uh, voice for a Western voice, Maybe it would be slightly different. Mm. I don't know. These, these are issues that are dealt with in Canada, the United States too. You know, yeah. women not sure what to say, what mm. to do. Yeah, super mm. interesting. Do you well, find that? Oh, sorry. No, I was just gonna say I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> counsel them to go to sing karaoke, but no, <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. I have a question. Do you find that because would a male audience still like this show? Sometimes I get that question if it's a show that deals with women and women's issues that maybe men mm. are like, oh, this isn't for me. But you, you seem to enjoy I, it. I, I enjoyed it a lot. And, um, you know, it's, I mean, you know, the men who are kind of put off by shows like this that talk about, like, reality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would argue are kind of a part of the problem themselves. <laughs> right. <laughs> you said it. I said it stay, on the internet. I'll stay out of it. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely enjoyable. And it's like, I know you were saying earlier how you, you, know, you don't necessarily like the anime style. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have that anime style, right? Okay. This is like, everybody looks like a, like a, like a mascot 
designed by uh, Sanrio. Like they're, they're all cutesy like um, Hello Kitty, so they don't go for the, the more, um, the, the, the style of anime that you're most used to. Right. Mm. In that sense, it's more, um, it's like a nice entry level anime mm. with a nice message behind it. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm actually so you have convinced me to maybe watch this, and since yes. I'm not totally into anime either, that was quite a I have feat. Succeeded. So congratulations. <laughs> well, there's uh, some weekend watching for you, or some weekday watching for you, whatever you need to do. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to Mojo Talks for more shows like this, and tune in next week. See you then. <laughs>